The Soybean School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, and High Stick NT. RealAgriculture.com comes to you today from Arva, Ontario. We're at the uh, Syngenta Research Farm and I'm joined by soybean breeder David Lee. Sir, thanks for having us. You're welcome. Hey, we're going to talk a little bit about soybean breeding today and uh, specifically, you know, crossing soybeans. And, you know, every year growers grab bags of soybeans, throw them in the drill and away they go. But it takes a little longer to get soybean varieties to commercial varieties. Uh, talk about how long it takes, David. Um, once we make the initial uh, cross, it can take anywhere from six to eight years to develop a new variety um, before it becomes commercial and available to the grower. Um, we uh, make 30% of our crosses here in Narva and then we make 70% uh, in South America. Once we make a cross, we send the seed to South America where we can uh, generate uh, rapidly generate uh, the different generations and it's probably two two years two and a half years before we actually yield test anything from that initial cross once we start the yield testing um, then at a second year of yield testing is where we would uh, start to increase seed for a new commercial line um, it's uh, great to have uh, facilities in uh, Hawaii uh, Chile and Puerto Rico because we can get three generations in one growing season one calendar year down there to uh, Speed up the process so we've cut uh, a year and a half to two years off the whole process Where it used to take uh, eight to ten years to develop a new commercial mm -hmm. variety But it all starts right here right with the cross so uh, I want let's uh, let's show growers how that cross is done How about that? Okay? So this here is the size of the female bud that we would work on um, to make the pollination. So we have to peel back the tiny green sepals so that we can get to a point where we can uh, put pollen from the male flower on. Once we get the sepals off, we pull the purple flower petals off. It's typically a two-step process. You don't want to damage the internal parts of the flower or we won't be successful. So once we get all those flower petals pulled out, then it would be ready for the male pollen. I don't have any male pollen with me, but this is the flower that we'd be using today to get the pollen from and to uh, open it up we just go like this with our tweezers get inside and pull out the pollen and then we would uh, place it onto the female bud that we had uh, worked with originally after that's done, we would attach a white tag just below where we make the poll pollination and then that will tell us um, at harvest time which uh, pod to harvest. Typically after one week, at one week after the pollination, we can tell if we've been successful or not because a new pod will be forming there. So David, how many of these crosses do you do in a year? We would make uh, over 2,000 pollinations here every summer at Arva. Um, it's, uh, we make a lot of pollinations because it's not uh, very successful some years. This year has been more difficult because of the weather. The cooler, wetter um, days are not ideal for pollinating. Um, for a good pollinating day, we would like uh, above 30 degrees Celsius during the day and uh, we would also like uh, high temperatures at night above 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, the success of the pollinator depends on uh, being able to get good male pollen 
uh, which doesn't form under cooler conditions. Right. Some pollinators are more successful than others. A uh, very good pollinator would have a 60% success rate and some others that aren't so um, good, good, they are uh, typically down 10 or 15% mm. success rate. Now let's talk about what you're looking for in a cross. I mean, what traits um, are you bringing from one piece of material to the other? And obviously the gold. Um, the main traits are yield. Uh, we want to take two high yielding parents and cross them together and hopefully uh, the result is a higher yielding variety for commercial release in six to eight years. Also we are looking for soybean cyst nematode resistance. 85 to 90 percent of our crosses would have uh, one parent that has that resistance. Um, we also like to have a major gene for Phytophthora root rot in most most of our crosses. And then there are other diseases that we're looking uh, at and that would be uh, sclerotinia white mold, it's a big one for this uh, southern Ontario and Quebec region. Right. So, so you've been working diligent this year and in six years we're going to see the results. That's right. right so there you go, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.